Module 4 Practical Guide to the Clinical Use of Velscope This presentation will introduce you to some of the practical realities of using Velscope in your dental practice. We'll briefly discuss the role of fluorescence visualization in oral mucosal and oral cancer screening and treatment. We'll make a comparison between fluorescence visualization with Velscope and another tool you use in your practice, the panoramic radiograph. We'll help you understand the underlying principles behind fluorescence visualization with Velscope. We'll discuss what a normal oral cavity looks like under Velscope and show you what some of the normal variations in presentation can look like. We'll show you some examples of abnormal mucosal tissue, both non-cancerous and cancerous lesions. And we'll conclude by reminding you of some of the important things to remember about successfully making Velscope a part of your clinical decision making. Velscope's role in oral cancer management can be broken down into four areas. First, the discovery of oral mucosal abnormalities during an oral cancer screening exam. Second, guidance for the dentist or specialist in selecting appropriate sites for biopsy. Third, assistance for the surgeon in identifying disease tissue around clinically apparent lesions, which can help determine the appropriate margin for surgical removal. And finally, is an ongoing surveillance and monitoring tool for patients at increased risk or who have had previously diagnosed lesions. Nevertheless, it is important to remember that Velscope is an adjunctive device and in no way replaces the conventional oral mucosal visual and tactile screening exam. This exam should always be performed first so that you have formulated an initial clinical impression prior to the use of Velscope. The discovery process with Velscope complements rather than replaces the conventional techniques. Fluorescence visualization with Velscope is showing you completely new visual information that is fundamentally different from what you see when you look at reflected light, be it from a white or chemiluminescent light source. It has the exciting and possibly life-saving potential to show you things that were not visible to the naked eye previously. However, in showing you oral tissue in a new light, it will probably be taking you into unfamiliar territory. Territory in which things that you could see under white light look just plain different. Or things that weren't that noticeable under white light now show up as plain as the nose in your face. But after understanding a few simple concepts, fluorescence visualization with Velscope makes sense and can become an invaluable tool to help you see the oral cavity with a second set of eyes. One of the main purposes of this video presentation is to help you make the transition into this world of oral tissue fluorescence. You'll learn enough about how Velscope and tissue fluorescence work so that you'll begin to understand what you see, and most importantly, relate it back to what you observe under white light. Every new clinical technique or tool requires some investment in time and effort to fully understand and appreciate. One of the primary values of fluorescence visualization with Velscope is as an adjunctive screening device to examine asymptomatic individuals, to discover areas of concern that are subtle or otherwise might be overlooked during the visual or tactile exam. After the visible or white light exam, Velscope is initially used to provide a general survey of the oral cavity to enhance the visualization or discovery of abnormal areas. This can be compared to the type of information that a clinician may discover when viewing a panoramic radiograph, which displays information or conditions that were previously undetected during the visual examination. Once an area of concern has been detected, the clinician focuses their attention on the area, looking for details on how it presents. This might be compared to how an additional periapical or bite wing radiograph might be utilized after an area is discovered on a panoramic radiographic image. This additional radiographic view is beneficial to facilitate investigation of disease that is not readily perceived by the human eye. Example, a vertical bite wing for evaluation of bone loss in periodontal disease or radiolucence of interproximal regions for dental caries. While radiography provides indirect visual images of human tissue that are displayed either on a computer monitor or on radiographic film, Velscope uses direct real-time visualization of the tissue. Similar to radiographic interpretation and imaging, Velscope utilization requires an understanding of underlying principles, a sound background in anatomy and physiology, and an appreciation of normal variance. 
This understanding is a key to taking full advantage of the technology and using it to discover abnormalities that truly warrant further investigation. To summarize, Velscope helps discover abnormalities that might otherwise have been overlooked. It is initially unfamiliar territory and thus requires training and experience to fully utilize. It is best used as a survey tool to help rule out abnormalities requiring further investigation is another means to visualize the disease process that complements rather than replaces the clinical impression and facilitates rather than provides a diagnosis. Before we go any further, let's remind ourselves of some basic facts. The oral mucosa consists primarily of two layers, the epithelium and the stroma. The epithelium, referred to more completely as stratified squamous epithelium, consists of basal, intermediate, and superficial squamous cells. The stroma is separated from the epithelium by the basement membrane. The stroma consists primarily of connective tissue, mostly collagen. It also contains capillaries. Note that a surface layer of keratin of various thickness can also be present, although it is not shown in this picture. Certain types of oral mucosa are naturally keratinized, while others can become keratinized as a result of chronic irritation or because of other disease processes. The mechanism of visual reflectance, or what happens when we see things under white light with our naked eye, is shown here. The type of reflection that mainly contributes to how we perceive an object is so-called diffuse reflectance. This is where photons of light actually enter an object, get scattered or bounced around inside, and then come back out again to our eye, that is, if they don't get absorbed first. White light is a mixture of all wavelengths of visible light, blue, green, yellow, and red. Short wavelength light, like blue light, is absorbed very strongly by mucosal tissue. Not many blue photons make it back outside the tissue without getting absorbed first. Red light, on the other hand, is much less strongly absorbed by mucosal tissue. A lot of red photons manage to re-emerge from the tissue and make it to our eye. This is why mucosal tissue seems to us to be predominantly red or pink in appearance. Notice that no new photons are generated in the tissue. What comes back to our eye is a subset of what illuminated the tissue in the first place. Fluorescence visualization is fundamentally different. When we illuminate the tissue with light of an appropriate wavelength, such as blue light, it enters the tissue just as it does for reflectance, but now it can be absorbed by special naturally occurring molecules in the tissue called fluorophores. These fluorophores absorb the blue excitation light and then readmit light at a longer wavelength, that is green, yellow, or red, a fraction of a second later. Blue light excites fluorophores in both the epithelium and the stroma. The natural fluorescence from the tissue is relatively dim, much less bright than the blue reflected light. The Velscope handpiece allows us to see the natural fluorescence by blocking the much brighter blue lights reflected back from the tissue. Also, proprietary filtering of the fluorescence lights is performed to optimize the contrast between normal and abnormal tissue. Because the fluorophores in the epithelium and stroma fluoresce mainly in the green when illuminated with blue light, oral mucosa looks predominantly green in appearance when viewed through the Velscope handpiece. This picture shows the inside of the cheek. You can also see the teeth here. Tooth enamel fluoresces more strongly than anything else in the oral cavity.